first of all, it is my pleasure to give my personal welcome to all University of Vietnam. And it's a great pleasure to have the opportunity after my lecture uh, to answer uh, on the question that uh, I received. And uh, the, first, the first question is interesting, is the challenge for an architect during the, during the work. Uh, the challenge is uh, extremely easy. We need to realize the best design, the best architecture in agreement of the lifestyle and not only build, but consider our activities like an intellectual activities, like art. So art uh, is a special discipline that everybody uses for communication, for communicate what we think regarding the world, social problem, economic problem, environment problem. So and each the challenge is to use architecture for uh, develop the philosophy and the idea that we have regarding what's. Uh, everything that happens in the world. So my idea is, which is the challenge? Is to use architecture like a tools for communication. The second question that I received is, which is the key point for to realize a sustainable architecture? My answer is a very easy. I consider architecture only the architecture that is really sustainable. And an unsustainable architecture is not architecture. It's just to build a building without any soul, without any meaning. But if you follow the tradition where don't exist in the past electricity, where don't exist the technology of today, the architect in the past they use the environment, wind, sun, and uh, to realize a, a healthy architecture. So I believe that for realizing a sustainable architecture is enough to follow the tools, the strategy that the architect of the past used for building a normal house. For example, just an example, I live in Florence. Around Florence, there is a lot of fantastic, beautiful villa realized in the Renaissance time. And when the architects realized the villa, they, the orientation of the building is north to south. In, in front of the south facade, there is a white stone. In north facade, in the back of north, north facade, there was a forest with a shadow and the difference of temperature create a wind inside and the wind create ventilation and create a good weather and climate inside. So that's very easy to understand what means to create a sustainable architecture. An architecture, an architecture that follow absolutely the tradition and the strategy that we use in the past when we don't have oil, where we don't have electricity and we can use only natural strategy, natural material. Another interesting question that I received from the student of the university was, which is the relationship between psychology and the lifestyle? Um, it's, uh, it's easy to answer also this. We, each architect, work for, to, for create the better lifestyle inside the architecture. And uh, the best strategy is a very, very old strategy. If you have a good light inside the building, if you have the opportunity to open the windows and don't use only air conditioning or heating and cooling system, if you can have a good relationship with the atmosphere, with the external atmosphere, with the nature, with the environment, this is the best in terms of uh, quality, psychology quality, in terms of lifestyle. So I believe that everybody have the experience to go in a skyscraper without windows and to have only air conditioning. 
you are not very comfortable because you think that what's happen if go out the electricity what's happen if i want to open the windows and to look outside it's impossible to do it so i believe that the best way to create a good atmosphere inside architecture is to create much as possible and a very comfortable space in agreement of the natural way of life in, in the in the in the current lifestyle where you are in a in agreement of what's happened in a, in open air so when you are inside and you feel that I am inside. I don't have the feeling when I'm in a garden, when I'm in a park. It's totally different. I suffer for to be inside. This is not good. So we need to realize architecture where the feeling of each person that they live inside is the same feeling that you can have outside. That's the best. It's not possible uh, um, all time, but if you can do this, this is the best. And another question, where is innovation? Or it's necessary that you look only the past and you don't look forward. What means innovation? Innovation means to transfer the knowledge from the past and the future. Innovation means to look forward, but don't lose, don't lose the knowledge that come from the past. So architecture don't exist without knowledge. Architecture don't exist if we don't have exactly the idea what we have realized in the past. And we take all this information, if we transfer this information in the future, this is innovation. So to be innovative means to understand exactly the, the, the condition of the lifestyle today and work for create better condition for future. This is innovation. And it's important that each architecture and each architect is in the same time innovative, absolutely look forward, but don't lose the knowledge and the identity culture of each uh, person that have an idea of architecture of design. Uh, another question that I consider extremely important for my work and my philosophy is the rules of materials in architecture. And I consider that materials is extremely important. First of all, because there is a strong connection between the materials and the territory where you work. So, and I think it's extremely important to use a local material. If you use a local material, you, it's easy to understand and to find the identity culture of one country. It's the same things that you have in a food. When you go outside, when I go outside of Italy, I'm in China or I will be in Vietnam or I will be in Japan. I love to test it, the food material of Japan, a food material of Vietnam, a food material of another country. So food and the material of food is a part of the culture of the culture of his country. So it's a less or more the same in architecture. When you work in a different country or in a different city, you need to understand the soul of this city and of the soul of this uh, landscape, of the soul of this country. And the soul is completely connected of the material. For example, according to me, don't make sense to use Italian Carrara marble around the world, I don't know, in China. I'm in China, there is a fantastic Chinese stone. I'm in Vietnam, there is a fantastic stone that comes from Vietnam. Why you don't use this? So, in my opinion, when it's possible, it's better to use local material and local technology. And the work of architecture is to improve this technology but in the same time to respect the tradition of the artisan, the tradition of the handcraft people, and to work with them. That's extremely important. So when I'm in Vietnam, I, my interest is to discover Vietnam, to discover the soul of Vietnam, the identity culture of Vietnam, and the material of Vietnam. 
stone, rock, bamboo, why not? And to, to try in a way to use this material. Because if I work with a local material, I, I work with the culture of the country where I work in that moment. Uh, during my last uh, lecture in Vietnam, I took in the hand about my dream project. And the name of this dream project is a Kiss Bridge. Kiss Bridge is a history uh, where there is the connection from uh, two parts. And am I, I imagine that there's a, when, you, when you realize the connection with two parts, so we realize something very similar about love. There is a man, there is a human, and two people that love each other and try to have a relationship, have a connection. So this bridge is uh, represent love, represent life, and represent the idea of connection with the people. Also friendly, it can be man and man, human and human, and to have a friendly relationship. But this is the history of our life. We are not alone in the world. We love to have a friendly relationship, to find other people and to shake a hand or to have an experience together. So this is the meaning of this bridge. This is the meaning of this project. And the relationship with the, the, the fresco that we have in the Sistina Chapelle is, a, is a similar because you see the best images in the of the fresco of Michelangelo is the two people that look each other and try to shake a hand, to shake his friendship, and one look in the eyes of the other one and shake the experience. And there is also a fantastic legend in Vietnam, Ngu Lang Chu Nu. I hope that I can pronounce well, I don't know. But everybody in Vietnam knows the, know very well this history, this legend is a legend that talk about love, that talk about uh, loyalty, that talk about the people that want to, to stay together. And what is the bridge? Is the, the bridge is exactly this. It's a connection from one part and another part. And the people work to arrive in the middle and to shake their the experience, to share experience. So I believe that the legend uh, the Vietnamese legend and the fresco designed by Michelangelo in the Sistina Chapa have the same soul, the same meaning. So, and I love this, and I love to share the, the Vietnamese legends and the Italian experience in terms of art and design in the Renaissance periods. And I try to realize in a project that connected this element. Sure, my bridge is, is a contemporary bridge, is realizing still steel structure is completely suspended. We have 25 meter bridge in cantilever in one side, another 25 meter in cantilever in the other side, and there is a 50 meter where this bridge is completely suspended. And a man and a woman or two friends arrived exactly in the middle, uh, 50 centimeter far far or close each other or far from each other and they can kiss together, they can shake a hand, they can say, I'm here, you are there, but we are together in front of the sun. That's my idea. And I hope that we can build this incredible huge project very soon. And it can be that this is my first project in Vietnam, but I believe that there is a, I can have more opportunity to build other projects, other building and I can give my small contribute to understand that to realize a building is not only a professional and business activity to create square meter. Our activity is an art activity, is an intellectual activity, and I hope that I can give my contribute to, to, to develop the idea that to build architecture relies on a great responsibility for the client, for the honor of the land, for the architect and for the people that live around in future. So that's my, my mission, to create architecture that looks like a piece of art and looks like uh, an, uh, not only a building.
but can tell us different aspects. It can tell, us, tell to the people that uh, we can realize uh, between art and a vision for the future.